All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Shepherd's Table experience where we want to make sure uh, that at this 930 virtual hour of worship, uh, that indeed you get to come in contact with God, you get to hear God, but most of all, you get to learn how to apply what God is saying to your life. We don't want to just give you a word. We just don't want you to be excited. We don't want you just to worship without the ability to apply what it is that God is saying to your life. Because we know it's a good word, not because it makes us shout, not because it makes us jump, not because it makes us dance. It's a good word because it changes how we live and how we respond unto the Lord. It's a good word because it moves us from where we are to where God wants us to be. And we're praying uh, for good word, but we're also praying for good soil. And that means that we have to begin to teal the lives of those in which come in contact with us so that the word can be implanted into their lives and they can see things sprout up that have never been. They can see grace, mercy, peace sprout up, prosperity sprout up, uh, new things sprout up, new fulfillment sprout up in their lives. And that is my prayer for you. And so come on, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And so as we come in this morning looking for a word, looking to see what it is that God is going to do at the shepherd's table, come Come on, is there anybody that can help us praise the Lord today? Anybody that can help us to call on the name of the Lord today? Anybody that can help us to say what thus says the Lord? Anybody excited about what God has done? Anybody excited about what God has said? Anybody excited about what God has put in your spirit? Anybody excited about what God is doing? Anybody excited about what God has done? Because God is a good God from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same his name is worthy to be praised oh bless his name ah uh, yes the psalmist says i will bless his name at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth i need some folk to help me worship today help me worship today shift your atmosphere that you might have a word that sits in that space with you and anchors you uh, to where it is God wants you to be. May the Lord bless you real good. Come on, somebody help me worship today. Walking by faith was not walking with my eyes As the shepherd left for the one When he could have just kept 99 Where ego led me stray And my pride could have brought on a demise Though I walked through the valley He never left my side The shepherd is what they call him Selfless, one who guides Just follow me, he say As the herd move with strides They say faith comes by hearing And once you hear it, you must apply Oh faithful servant you are To it I must oblige now it's my turn to search, it's my turn to try. To gather the sheep I can shepherd and use the Lord's strength as my rod. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's on Murray's little land in the direction of where I'm called. Welcome to the shepherd's table, it's lit. Good morning everybody and welcome to the shepherd's table. We are indeed excited, we're excited, we're excited to be here. And as we understand what this shepherd's table is, it is my desire, our desire to be practicing Christians, and we understand practicing Christians are indeed shepherds, and they help each other to become disciples. They help each other to practice what we're supposed to practice. They help each other uh, to become what God needs them to become, and in order to become what God wants you to become, you have to know what God is saying and be obedient, and when you know what God is saying and you are obedient and respond appropriately to that, uh, then God begins to do stuff 
uh, do things, apply blessings, attach signs, wonders, and miracles to your life. Christians ought to be the most attractive people in the world because of what God is continuously attaching to their lives. But that's not all of our stories uh, because many of us love the Lord, many of us know the Lord, many of us believe the Lord, but we still have a problem being obedient to what God is saying. We still have a problem knowing what God is saying. We go to church, we go to Bible study, uh, we go to prayer meeting, but we still have an issue when God stops us, when God speaks speaks to us in the middle of the night, when God speaks to us on the fly, when God changes our plans, we still have an issue following Jesus. We are like the rich young ruler who comes to Jesus saying, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be in the presence of the Lord? What must I do to be close to you? And when God tells us to do something, uh, we then say we can't do that. We then say that's off limits. We then say that doesn't make any sense. We then begin to bemoan what it is that God is asking of us. And we want to see what it is that God has for us. And the only way to continuously see that is to live a DOA lifestyle. So we come to this table. We come to this table trying to help each other uh, to live a more effective Christian lifestyle that brings about fulfillment. I I, I began to realize that there are a lot of disgruntled people that sit in the pews of churches because they have no fulfillment. Why? Because they hear the word, uh, they go to church, they know the Lord, and they know what the preacher is saying, but they've never really applied it wholeheartedly to their life. So they don't have the fulfillment that comes from the attachments of God. We got to do something and not just what we want to do, not just what we think will work. We got to do what God says. And so we have to discern his voice and be obedient and respond appropriately. And so today, as we come to this DOA table, we are indeed looking forward to uh, learning how to live this DOA lifestyle. And the best way I knew how to do it is to give us little bits and pieces called the ABCs of living a DOA lifestyle. And so today, uh, virtually and at the table, we have persons telling us what is the most impactful A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or I. We go to the preaching lab today to do J, and I got people texting me all week long, what's the J? I got people trying to guess it. The producer is back there uh, trying to, she sent me the whole dictionary of J's and still didn't get it right. Uh, and so we look forward to telling you what the J is today, but it's not a clever technique. It is the fact that we're trying to figure out what are the real rudimentary details that will help you to live a DOA lifestyle. So, hello. I was asked to speak on what letter um, in the DOA elements um, I find to be most impactful. And for me, I initially thought just the letter O for just to obey the word of God or to, to obey God's voice was important um, or the most important or impactful for me. But I realized that to discern the voice of God was even more impactful because in order for me to obey, I must first understand that I am hearing what God is saying and what God is speaking. And then uh, I obey. So I find myself um, recognizing that I'm hearing from God, whether it be in my prayer life, whether it be when I read the word of God, whether it be someone speaking to me, um, and something in reference to something that's going on in my life, God uses whatever he can to speak to you. And the word tells us he's, he used a donkey to speak. You know, the word also tells us that the word of God is living, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. So in order to obey the word, we must first know that we are hearing the word and to discern that it is the word of God. I always line what I hear to the word of God. If God said it, I'm going to find it in the word of God. And so as someone who's constantly searching to hear from God, I know that what I need to hear and what God has to say, it is also in his word. So if there's a word that is impactful for me, it is to discern the voice of the Lord. 
to know that God is speaking to me. God bless you today. Amen. I do thank and praise God. DOA, just discerning, obeying the attachment will come. I thank and praise God the letter that really meant a lot to me for a while was the letter E, the letter for eat. When I was going through the death of my baby girl, a few months later, my brother died. And in between, two of our best friends, like family, passed. And I had to depend on something. What I depend on was the word. And I went to the word. I went to God. I went to the word. But God said to me, what have I given you? What have I given you? Eat what I've given you. Eat the word. So I, I thought about it. I said, oh, the same word. Go back and eat it. You are concerned about a new word. You don't need a new word. You need a word that's going to get in there and do what needs to be done. A, a word that's going to get in that inner man and, and do what needs to be done in him. And you don't have to worry about this, that, and the other. And one thing I know about the, the Lord, every now and then he'll give you a sweet word. Because every now and then going through that crisis, and I have to face challenges. I have to face people. I have to face family. And some of them weren't so nice. But I had to hold my peace. The Lord spoke and he let me know. I got you. I got this. Go back and eat. Eat. Don't worry about snacking. Don't worry about stopping by a McDonald's, a Burger King. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the word, the word. I'm not talking about the, the milk. I'm talking about the real meat that's going to make you stand, going to hold you up. When you think you can't stand, TC, listen here. You're going to stand on the word because you eat the word. You eat the word. Thank God. Thank God for DOA. We must discern it. We must obey. Attachment will come. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, uh, Reverend James, I, I know for a fact, I, I want to just say publicly that I am so impressed with your growth, so impressed with your walk, and more so than that, I am uh, overwhelmed by your willingness to serve. And I want to just tell you, thank you publicly on behalf of those in which you serve, the families in which you have served, and those in which you have helped along the way. Uh, and uh, that indeed has to come from a person that knows how to hear what God is saying and moves despite how you feel according to what God is saying. And so as you think about living a DOA lifestyle, since I have you at the table, tell me first, before we talk about the letter that has been most impactful for you from the ABCs of uh, uh, living a DOA lifestyle, tell me what this DOA lifestyle means to you and has done for you. Well, Dr. Chris, okay, because yeah. you know I like calling you doctor. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the teaching, number one. Mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic hit, I asked God, what was next in my life? And when you came with the DOA, discerning God voice, understanding God voice, knowing that it's God voice, obeying him, being obedient, and your attachments will come. I never paid attach, uh, attention to the attachments, but discerning his voice rang so hard in me. So when I asked God what was next, that was next in my life. The DOA, I must live a lifestyle pleasing unto God. So I took that in and I prayed and I asked God to manifest the DOA into us, manifest to God, that I may begin to walk in this and it took some praying and it, it, it took some talking to God but what I liked about it is that when I asked God what was next in my life the DOA you have to really live this Veronica not just talk it but you got to live it and what I do like about it, it changed my behavior 
We often hear Christians say, well, this is the way my mama used to do it. This is the way my daddy used to do it. But I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do it God's way. I want God to be pleasing in my life. Yes, I did this for so long, for 64 years. But now let's try something new. Let's try to do it God's way. Not what my parents did, but what God has for me. So I put this into to, to the spirit that God gave me, and I'm walking with it. And even though I have to hang in there, times are rough for me right now. They ain't easy. You know, but I keep pressing. I keep pushing. And before they eat, because that's, that's what I like. In the beginning, God said to me, was the word this morning. And the word was with God. And the word is God. So E is what I need. Because with, with, without facing my challenges, without giving up something, without hanging in there, without being a system, I have to eat that word. And God said it to me this morning. I said, God, what am I supposed to say? You let them know. In the beginning was the word, Veronica. And the word was with me. And the word is me. So I take that. But I have to deny also, got to deny. So all of the letters is good for you. you for me, <laughs> I'm not one, but I do like to eat. But all of them, they they kind of impact each, you know, each one. You do build on one. You another. can't yes. have one without the other. Good. So good. this is what I have learned, and it has really changed how I talk to people, how I approach my situations. And I be asking God, I be writing down, the road, okay, God, now, 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 Dr. Chris said, I can ask you. So I'm writing down the road, asking him, God, what do I need to be doing? Because I already believe, I already chose, you know. But sometimes in our emotional state, that, that, that behavior, character that we have, hear what I'm saying, sometimes it rise up when people say things to you. And I don't be liking what they say, but I remember the DOA, discern, you know, obey, attachments. I remember that, and I know God is there watching me. Wow. You know, so I have to be careful wow. when I respond back to people in a tone that I used to that I used to respond. I find out that if I bring it down a little bit, you know, it's the sweetness of God coming through me. Wow. You know, and folks can see that, and you can catch more with honey than you can with vinegar. Hallelujah! Yeah, that's absolutely true. I, I love it. Now, Ms. Reverend James went through every single letter that we had. She said you got to ask for the word, uh, but she said uh, Dr. Chris said you got to. I didn't say that. God said ask, and you shall receive. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the messenger. Said ask. Then she said you got to believe. Then she said she choosing. Then she said you got to deny the word. Then she said I love to eat. I love to eat. I love to eat. So I got to face my challenges and I got to give up. She said all of that. Then she said you got to hang on in there. Um, and the only thing that she didn't say is that you got to insist on this thing now. You got to insist on this thing working. But she did say without using that because she said I prayed that this DOA lifestyle would manifest within me. And, and I think anybody that's not getting the DOA, anybody that is not seeing God move through a DOA lifestyle uh, may need to begin with that. And so since I got you at the table, I love this. Come on, pray for persons that may watch this, that they may uh, find the DOA lifestyle uh, relevant and practical, but most of all, uh, meaningful for their lives. And so I'm asking you to pray that they might have a desire for it to manifest in their lives. I don't know what that sounds like, uh, but it feels like some of us know what we're talking about, but we haven't as you've done, said, Lord, I need this to manifest in my life. I don't know what keeps us from doing that. I don't know what, uh, we're hesitant about doing that, but maybe uh, you can break up the soil with your prayer this morning. Come on. Father God, almighty God, all powerful God, all knowing God, God understanding, God of hope, God of resurrection power. Lord God, I have asked you over and over. God manifest. Lord God, what the angel of this house is teaching, manifest it into my spirit, that God, I may live by, that I may walk by. But now, God, I'm asking for everybody who's listening in, by a way of cell, telephone, Lord God, TV, Lord God, computer, whatever it is, manifest, Lord God. Help them to be open. Feeding it to your spirit, Lord God. Help them to listen, Lord God, and not be rebellious. Help them to open up. Help them to surrender. Help them to let go, Lord God, and let you lead them and guide them by your hands, Lord God. God, you may have to wrap them up in your bosom and hold them tight, Lord God. Oh, God, but you have given them free will, Lord God. 
it rains, Lord God, inside their bellies, Lord God. So God, I ask for the manifestation, Lord God, to manifest in those who are watching and even those who wanted to watch that may not be on here, Lord God. Oh God, there is something about the dunamis power of God that when he manifests the word of God, the spirit of the living God, he breathes breath and life into the word inside of you. You begin to live by, you begin to operate it by, Lord God. You begin to want more and more and more in eat of it. God's bread is like a sweet honeycomb. And I'm telling you, if you pray and ask God to manifest his spirit, look at the spirit of the word of God, the DOA process, he will bring it. But you have to ask. You have to believe. And you got to choose, and you have to deny, Lord God, and God to, and and you have to eat, you have to face, Lord God, and so God, we ask Him in the name of Jesus Christ to touch everybody right now. Oh God, fill them up, let them be insistent, consistent, Lord God, coming to you, Lord God, whatever it takes, Lord God. I'm believing in the power of the Almighty God that God, you can do it, God, you did for me, you can do it for them, Lord God. Oh God, increase the power, Lord God, that's within them, Lord God. The DOA is a pursuit of life. You have got to walk this thing. This is the next thing to have come after COVID, Lord God, but it's been here, but we never really paid it that much attention. We always want to have this thing to say and that thing to say, Lord God. But God, I ask you, Lord God, to shut, Lord God, our mouths, Lord God, and open up our ears, Lord God. Amen. Manifest the word that it deeps down into our belly, that we eat it, we digest it. God, it is in Jesus' name. Continue to breathe on your people in Jesus' name, Lord God. Our hearts and minds, Lord God, we say amen, amen. God in heaven, have mercy on us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I'm so excited about what God shall do for anybody uh, that is a recipient of that prayer and seeks to live a DOA lifestyle. Uh, and so, again, the DOA lifestyle is learning how to discern the voice of the Lord, learning how to be obedient, which is responding appropriately, doing whatever you have to do to do what it is God says do so that God can attach things that you don't even know uh, are possible in your life. Let's now shoot on over to the preaching lab uh, that we might get to see what the J is in the ABCs of living a DOA lifestyle. We are now in the preaching lab, and I'm excited because a new thing is happening, and people are getting excited about what the word shall be, uh, and I'm grateful for the excitement. I'm grateful for uh, the anticipation for the word that is building for so many, and so today we find ourselves looking at the ABCs of living a DOA lifestyle, and we have progressed through a through I, and now today we're looking for J, and just for a recap, you have to learn how to ask for the word. Uh, no matter what you're going through in life, you got to learn to ask for a word. If it's good, if it's bad, if you're unfulfilled, if you are ambivalent, if you don't know what's going on, you're just in a blah season, you don't know what you need, you need to make a decision, whatever it is, you got to learn to ask for the word. It starts with you opening up your mouth and asking God for a word, not asking God to do something, asking God for a word. You can tell God what you want. You can tell God what you need. You can ask God to do something specific. Uh, but when you have those desires, you need a word that is going to govern that. And so you ask God for the word. Uh, you want a new house? Ask God, what's the word for my new house? What's the word for uh, this? What's the word for that? Ask for a word, but then you have to believe the word. And then once you start believing the word, that means it's going to change your behavior. Uh, and as it changes your behavior, you're going to then have choices. You're going to have options because you begin to become attractive when you start doing what God says do. Uh, but you're going to have to choose the word. And in order to choose the word, you're going to have to deny yourself. And in order to deny yourself, you're going to have to learn how to eat 
the word. And in order to eat the word, you're going to have to begin to understand that eating the word is what's going to nourish you. And when you are nourished, you can now face your challenges instead of hiding from your challenges. And when you face your challenges, you begin to see uh, that greater is he that's in you than is in the world. You begin to see that giants do fall. Uh, and as you face your challenges, you then have to learn how to give up to go up. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to really go through a DOA lifestyle and not willing to sacrifice. And then as you give up to go up, uh, then we get to the H, which is sometimes you've done nothing wrong. Sometimes it's taking longer than you want it to. Sometimes God is working on some things that you know not about, so you just have to hang on in there uh, so God can do what it is that he's needing to do. And while you're hanging on in there, how do you hang on when it's taking too long? How do you hang on uh, when things are not going the way you want to? You have to insist on that word. You got to be insistent. You got to continue to insist that God is, that God is able, that God is a healer, that God is a provider, that God is a way maker. You have to insist on that word. And so now that we have our recap, it is time for the J. So let's look at the text today for what it is that God wants to say to us. And so meet me in Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, I'm beginning at that first verse. And it says this, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried to the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sayers of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran and the herd, he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds of milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before him. While he ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked. There in the tip, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. We want to stop right there as we prepare ourselves for uh, the ABCs of living a DOA lifestyle. And as we enter into uh, this space of J, uh, again, these are not exercises of creativity, not exercises of trying to be cute and clever with the word, but these are exercises of trying to give you the ABCs that you can put together to really live a fulfilling God relationship that brings about things that you never knew could be uh, possible in your life. And so a DOA lifestyle is one where you are discerning of the voice of the Lord, one which you're obedient to that voice, which means you respond appropriately and do whatever you have to uh, according to do uh, accordingly so you can do what God says. And when you do what God says, uh, then he'll do things that you never could imagine. That brings about fulfillment. Uh, that brings about things you never could imagine. That makes things happen that you didn't know were possible. It brings you out of things you weren't supposed to make it out of. That's the DOA lifestyle. And that's what gives us testimonies that break yokes. That's what 
give us testimonies that we can speak over people's lives and tell them uh, that it shall be well. And so as we come to uh, this time, uh, now it's time for the J. And these letters are supposed to help you to live that DOA lifestyle. Uh, and so while you are insisting on the word, uh, the J is what you have to do while you are insisting. The J is what you have to do while you're hanging on in there. The J is what you have to do to deny yourself. Uh, and so uh, here it is. The J is what you have to do to choose the word. The J is what you have to do to believe the word. And so I need everybody to just write it with me. I'm going to spell it out for you. Uh, but I need you to learn how to juxtapose what you're going through with the word. Uh, everybody say juxtapose. Uh, J U X. T-A-P-O-S-E, juxtapose. To juxtapose something, you have to put things that are not similar next to each other because sometimes, even though things are different, you can't tell the difference until they are close to each other. Every married person uh, knows something about juxtaposing. Uh, my wife will come out and she'll say, uh, which shoe should I wear? This one or this one? And she'll put her feet right next to each other. Uh, and I am supposed to choose because has she shown me uh, the shoes uh, by themselves? I would say it doesn't matter. But when you juxtapose them, uh, there's a difference and one works better uh, than the other. And when we are going through life, we have to learn how to juxtapose uh, what we see uh, and what God says. And oftentimes, God is trying to do something different in our lives, uh, but we can't see it, we can't perceive it, and we can't get excited about it until we juxtapose our current condition uh, uh, with what God is saying. Uh, and to juxtapose means we got to put them right there together, and we got to look at them right side by side. And as we begin to look at the text, the Bible says uh, that Abraham um, is sitting in his tent, uh, and it says uh, at that juncture, uh, as we know the story of Abraham, that he's been promised, uh, 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 he's been promised uh, a legacy. He's been promised uh, generations of children. He's been promised uh, that God is going to give him as many children uh, as the stars in the sky and as the sand kernels on the seashore, but he has yet to have a child. And what we know about this is that Abraham wants one. Abraham has been bothered by it. Sarah has been bothered by it. They have gone through uh, uh, an Adam and Eve experience where they tried to work it out on their own and it has not worked out on their own. Anybody ever wanted something in life and you tried to work it out on your own and it only created a mess in your life and you're sitting there with the broken pieces, you're sitting there with the frustration, you're sitting there with everything that you're going through and you're wondering why it is that way when you thought God was trying to do something for you and now all you have is broken pieces all you have now is frustration now all you have is harder days before you because of the choices that you made in the aftermath of trying to get what it is that you thought God was trying to do um, Abraham and Sarah have been dealing with Ishmael and all that came with that uh, it was Sarah's idea it was Abram's uh, participation that brought it about uh, and now they're dealing with some things that they don't know how to deal with they're frustrated about some things that didn't have to be that way all because uh, uh, they heard what God said uh, but they didn't juxtapose what God said with the instructions that they had uh, uh, sometimes we get excited about what God shall be uh, but when you get excited about what God shall be uh, uh, let me take you back to the A you got to ask for the word God I hear this is what you're saying so what's my word what shall I be doing because I don't want to go astray I don't want to mess this thing up what should I be doing now uh, am I supposed to build this am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to go there? What is my word for this situation? I feel like you're about to make some things happen. I feel like you're about to turn this thing around. I feel like you're about to bring me out. I feel like you're healing my body. I feel like you're healing relationships. I feel like you're making things happen. I feel like you're opening up heaven. I feel like you're about to pour a blessing. Uh, but where should I be? I want to catch this thing. Uh, where should I be? I want it to fall all over me. Where should I be to get my anointing? Where should I be to be where I need to be? Where should I be to serve the people I need to serve? Where should I be to give the testimony I need to give? I want to be in a line 
agreement with you. Wow. And like Elisha, I want to follow you wherever you go because I need a double anointing uh, uh, to get through this thing. And so every now and then we got to learn uh, how to juxtapose uh, what's going on in life. And as we look at the text, uh, uh, the first thing that you got to learn how to juxtapose is you got to juxtapose uh, how you feel against what you feel God is doing. Those are two different things, but it sounds the same. You got to juxtapose how you feel uh, uh, against what you feel God is doing. Let me say it again, because some of y'all are saying that's the same thing. No, it's not. That's why you got to learn how to juxtapose. Uh, you got to learn how to juxtapose. Put them side by side so you can see the difference. Uh, how you feel uh, and what you feel God is doing. Uh, and I say that because God speaks through a uh, feeling, but how you feel and what you feel God is doing are not the same thing. How do I know? You can feel sad. You can feel hurt. You can feel disappointed. But you can also feel at the very same time that God is about to make that thing work for your good. And so feeling like he's going to make it work for your good ought not leave you feeling sad. Ought not leave you feeling disappointed. Ought not leave you feeling angry. But you feel that way. And you have a right to feel that way. Yeah, because what you go through hurts. Uh, what you go through is disappointing. What you go through, you feel like has robbed you of some joy and of some peace. Uh, and what you go through is at the fault uh, and behest of others uh, that meant you no good. Uh, but you feel like everything is going to be all right uh, because God has made a way uh, out of no way. God has dropped something in your spirit. Uh, God has shown you some things. Uh, and so now you got to learn how to juxtapose uh, how I feel uh, based upon uh, uh, what God is saying. Uh, and for Abraham, check it out. The text starts by saying uh, uh, it's hot. And Abraham is in his tent at the heat of the day. But what you also have to understand uh, is that uh, at this time, it is about three days removed from Abraham's circumcision. He's a grown man that's just been circumcised, uh, which very well may mean that he's hot, he's bothered, and he's in pain. Uh, I need you to understand uh, that every now and then uh, you can be going through life and you can have a many of emotions going on all at the same time. And for him, what we have to understand is that he's hot. He's bothered and he's in pain. Uh, but the Bible says, despite how he felt when three men showed up in the city, he felt like God was showing up. Uh, I need somebody to understand. Uh, you can feel hurt. Uh, you can feel down. Uh, you can feel like everything is over. Uh, but Abraham, in the midst of how he felt, uh, also felt like God was showing up. Uh, uh, three men. Why are these three men? Was there anything special? The text doesn't say there was anything special. Uh, nothing says anything was special about these men. But Abraham felt like it was something special about them. Uh, so when you just oppose how you feel, uh, and what you feel God is doing, it makes you do something uh, despite your emotions. It makes you do something uh, despite how you feel. It makes you do something despite your anger. It makes you do something despite your pain. It makes you do something despite your disappointment. Here it is. Uh, Abraham is moving and following three men that he does not know. Uh, in the midst of the heat of the day, uh, in the midst of his pain, uh, uh, because he believes uh, that the Lord is showing up. Uh, and so he says, let me get you some food. Uh, let me get you some water. Uh, let me be as hospitable as I can. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Uh, he's asking these men to come inhabit his place of being. And the Bible says uh, that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And so what does that mean? Uh, when you begin to juxtapose how you feel uh, versus what God is about to be able to do, uh, you got to learn how to praise him uh, even though nothing's changed. Uh, nothing's changed in Abraham's life. Uh, nothing's changed in his situation. Uh, nothing's changed in his familiar situation. Uh, he still has his mistakes to deal with. Uh, he still has his mess ups to deal with. Uh, he still has his pain to deal with. Uh, he still has his disappointment to deal with, uh, but he feels like God is showing up. Uh, and when I juxtapose how I feel uh, with what I feel like God is about to do, uh, it makes me do stuff. Uh, it makes me worship. Uh, it makes me praise. Uh, and I need somebody to learn uh, that when you juxtapose how you feel uh, versus what you feel God is doing, uh, you got to learn how to praise God right there. Uh, 
so God can inhabit that space, uh, so God can do something in that space. Uh, and so as he's beginning uh, to be hospitable, uh, I need everybody to understand that's what praise is. Uh, even though you're going through, uh, you got to be hospitable. You gotta be hospitable to the Lord. Uh, uh, how is it uh, uh, that God can be so good, uh, but as soon as you hit a roll bump, uh, you push God away? Uh, that's not hospitable. Uh, how is it uh, that God can have done all that He's done unto to you, uh, and all He's done for you, uh, and made a way for you, uh, and brought you out, uh, and carried you over, uh, and made a way out of nowhere, uh, and done signs and wonders and miracles, uh, and healed your body, uh, and kept your mind? Uh, and healed your self-esteem and made you understand that you are more than enough and open doors for you and put you in places you didn't deserve and put your name in people's mouths and put your name on people's hearts and open up doors for people to provide for you. How is it that he can do that not once, not twice, but over and over and over and over and over again? And then when God shows up in the midst of what you're going through, you got the nerve not to be hospitable. You got the nerve not to invite God in. You got the nerve to make God stand out on the curb. You got the nerve to make God walk behind you. You got the nerve to ice God out. You got the nerve to ask God how long. You got the nerve to act like God ain't never done nothing for you. But if you're going to be hospitable, then you got to learn how to invite the Lord in. And that means I'm going to pray him uh, while I'm going through. Uh, that means I'm going to praise him uh, while I'm hurting. Uh, God, you're welcome uh, in this place. Uh, right here where I'm hurting. Uh, right here where I'm going through. Uh, right here when I don't feel good about myself. Uh, right here where they're talking about me. Uh, I will praise you uh, because praise is uh, what I do uh, when I'm going through. Why? Uh, because I need the Lord to be with me uh, and he inhabits the praises of his people. Uh, and it's right here in the text uh, uh, when Abraham uh, is not feeling his best, uh, he finds a way uh, to be hospitable to the move of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on. Somebody say, I got to juxtapose. I, I got to juxtapose. I, I got to juxtapose. Uh, but the second thing you got to learn to juxtapose is this. You got to juxtapose what God has done against what you feel he has done. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us get so frustrated about what our life looks like. We want to believe God. We want to see God. We know God is good. We know God is able, uh, but we get caught up looking at what God hasn't done. And our response to God is based upon what God hasn't done as opposed to what God has done. Our belief is based upon what God hasn't done, based upon what God has done. Our testimony, uh, our worship, uh, our corporate worship, uh, our corporate praise, uh, oftentimes is based upon what he's done for me lately. And if something hasn't happened the way that we want it to happen lately, uh, then we don't have as much exuberance. We don't have as much energy. We don't have as much passion. We don't have as loud a shout. We don't, don't have the same activity in our feet uh, because we're beginning to think about what God hasn't done. Uh, and so we have to begin to juxtapose uh, what God has done uh, against what you feel like he hasn't done. Uh, because when he is trying to prepare a meal for these three men, uh, he feels like God is showing up through these three men. Uh, I need you to understand at this point, uh, Abraham is responding to what God has done, uh, not what he hasn't done. Uh, I'm worshiping not because of what God hasn't done. I'm worshiping because of what God has done. Uh, uh, and as we get to the end of the text, uh, the Bible tells us that Sarah was around the corner listening uh, and she could not worship God uh, uh, even though the men said she should be pregnant uh, in a year from now, she could not worship God uh, because she did not juxtapose uh, what God had done versus what he hasn't done. Uh, 
Uh, all she can think about is uh, I'm an old woman uh, and he hasn't blessed me with a child. Uh, uh, but when you juxtapose that with everything else that he has done, uh, you want to understand uh, that if he can do all of that, Lord knows uh, he can do what he said. Uh, and I need somebody right about now uh, to get your mind made up uh, uh, that you don't have to worry about what it is uh, that God hasn't done. Uh, all you got to worry about is what he has done. Uh, and when you look at what he has done, uh, that ought to prove to you that there is nothing uh, impossible for God. Uh, can somebody just take a minute uh, and begin to juxtapose uh, what God has done uh, versus what he hasn't done? Uh, uh, because I would even uh, begin to argue. Uh, I would begin to press uh, the fact that even when he hasn't done stuff, uh, that speaks to what he has done. Uh, uh, because he didn't bless you with what you wanted him to bless you with. Uh, that still blessed you. Uh, that still brought you through. Uh, because he didn't do it, that kept you. Uh, because he didn't do it, that provided for you. Uh, because he didn't do it, that opened doors for you. Uh, and then when you begin to think about what he has done, uh, as they used to say when I look back over my life uh, and I think things over, my soul shouts hallelujah. Why? Uh, because there was a time when you didn't think you would make it out, uh, but the Lord brought you out. Uh, there was a time in which you didn't think you could make it through, uh, but the Lord carried you through. Uh, there was a time uh, when you didn't know how it was going to work out, uh, but the Lord worked it out anyhow. Uh, there was a time uh, where you were thinking I was going to be dead, uh, but the Lord showed up uh, and healed your body. Uh, there was a time uh, where you didn't know how you were going to make it to the end of the week, uh, but before you even got done praying, Money sold up before you even got done praying. Somebody was inviting you to lunch before you even got done praying. Somebody said, Come on with me. The Lord knows how to do what the Lord knows how to do, and He doesn't have to do it the way you want Him to do it. And so every now and then, you got to learn how to juxtapose what God has done versus what He hasn't done. Because the Lord has done too much for me for me to start talking about what He hasn't done. Because I heard somebody say, if he doesn't do one more thing for me, uh, he's already done more uh, than enough. Uh, and I need some folk right about now uh, that can just suppose everything that God has done for you. Uh, first, what he has not done for you. Uh, and go ahead and say all of my good things uh, outweigh my bad things. Uh, and I sure enough won't complain. Uh, I will bless the name of the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and his praise uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, Cause when I juxtapose what he's done uh, and what he hasn't done, uh, I'll make my boast in the Lord, uh, and the humble shall hear it and be glad. Why? Because when I juxtapose uh, what he has done uh, versus what he hasn't done, uh, I realize that he heard my cry uh, and he answered my cry. Uh, when I juxtapose uh, what he has done uh, versus what he hasn't done, I understand. Uh, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, uh, but the Lord brings them out of them all. Uh, when I juxtapose uh, what he has done versus what he hasn't done, I understand uh, that all things work together for the good of those that love God and work according to its purposes. Somebody open up your mouth. Uh, somebody put it in the chat the box. Juxtapose. Juxtapose. What it is that God has done against what you feel like he hasn't done. But lastly, you have to learn how to juxtapose what he says he will do first what you think he can do. You got to juxtapose what you think what he says he will do against what you think you can do. See, the problem is you've never seen all that God can do. And so when you juxtapose what God says he will do versus what you think God can do, you realize that there is no comparison because I've never seen everything that God can do. So whatever it is uh, that you are putting beside what God will do, uh, because this is all you think God can do, uh, is always going to fail in comparison because you've never seen all that God can do. And because you've never seen all that God can do, uh, you don't know what God is able 
to do, uh, which is why when you begin to juxtapose, uh, you begin to see that God's side always outweighs anything else that I can put up against what God says he's going to do, what God wants to do, what God shall do. Nothing can be in comparison to that because nothing is impossible for God. And so when Abraham and Sarah began to look at what God says he shall do and what they think God can do, they begin to say, well, if God can allow us to have children, why didn't he do it Yes, but God says by this time next year uh, that you indeed you will have a child and the Bible says uh, that they both laugh uh, at the notion that God is going to make them pregnant. Isn't that amazing? Uh, God will have you laughing uh, at what he's trying to do in your life. Uh, God will have you laughing uh, at what you thought was impossible in your life. Uh, God will have you mesmerized uh, and giggling about what it is that he's able to do uh, because I never knew he could do it like that. I never knew it was possible like that. I never knew he could come through like that. I never knew he was able like that. I never knew he could bless me like that. I never knew he could shift it like that. I never knew he could overcome like that. I never knew he was able to do what he's able to do like that. That. I never knew he could move things out of the way like that. I, I didn't know that the anointing that God provides works like that. I, I didn't know uh, that the anointing could get me through the fire like that. I, I didn't know that the anointing could get me through the blood uh, like that. I, I didn't know the anointing could get me over my emotions uh, like that. I, I didn't know he'd make my enemies my footstool uh, like that. I, I didn't know uh, that he would bring me out like that. That. I didn't know he would come down and sleep with me like that. I didn't know he would walk with me like that. I didn't know he would talk with me like that. I didn't know he would hold my hand like that. I didn't know he would make things happen like that. I didn't know he would show up like that. I didn't know he would show out like that. I didn't know he would come through like that. I didn't know he would bless me like that. I didn't know he would elevate me like that. I didn't know he would promote me like that. I didn't know he would bless my children like that. I didn't know he would heal me like that. I didn't know it would be all right like that. I didn't know I would have peace like that. I didn't know that everything was going to be all right like that. But when I juxtapose uh, what God shall do uh, with what God can do, uh, then I realize uh, that there's nothing impossible for God, uh, which then means uh, I got to hang on in there, yes, uh, which means I got to insist on the word yes, uh, which means I got to be willing to give up, yes, uh, which means I got to be willing to face my challenges, yes, uh, which means I got to learn how to eat the word yes, uh, so I can keep on going, uh, I want to go, uh, because I feel uh, no way is tired yet, uh, I want to go uh, and see what the end shall be, uh, so I got to deny myself yes, uh, and I got to choose the word yes, uh, and I got to believe the word yes, uh, and I got to ask for the word yes, uh, and when the word comes, uh, I got to learn how to juxtapose what God says what I think. Got to learn how to juxtapose what God says yes. and what I feel. Yes. I got to learn how to juxtapose what God says yes. and what other people say. Yes. And when I juxtapose it, I got to look at things. I got to look at facts because when you juxtapose, there is no opinion anymore. The facts are before you. How many times has God come through for you? And how many times have you failed your own self? Now, why would you listen to yourself over God? How many times have people let you down? Why would you trust people over God? How many times has God come through for you despite your plans? And how many times did God have to save you when your own plans didn't work? And so now when you juxtapose what God says, first your stuff. Your feelings, yes. your thoughts, yes. your plans, yes. your wisdom, yes. your knowledge, yes. your understanding. He says, my ways yes. are greater than your ways. Yes. My thoughts yes. are better yes. than your thoughts. And I yes. know the plans I have for you, yes. says the Lord. Yes, Lord. 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Somebody say juxtapose. I know how it feels, but he says I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. How long? Somebody say juxtapose. He knows the plans he has for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you. Lord, why me? Somebody say juxtapose. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans to prosper you, not to hurt you. But Lord, why would you allow this happen? Somebody say juxtapose. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. So, we come to this moment. The facts are before you. Can you hear God? Do you like Jesus? So, when you juxtapose what God has done for you and what anybody else in this world has done for you, you understand where your affinity, where your priority, and where all of your loyalty ought to be. When God speaks, you ought to drop everything. When God says something, you ought to move immediately. When God opens up his mouth, you ought to stop and give God a hand clap of praise, knowing full well that this is the thing that can change my life. This is the thing that can shift the atmosphere. This is the thing that makes all things well. And so we come to this moment now. God is speaking. Now you got to juxtapose. What is salvation going to do? for my life when I got this going on. I got bills to pay. I got kids acting up. I got job issues. I got money issues. What is salvation going to do? Uh, well, I, I need you to understand when you juxtapose what you're going through with what God can do, uh, then you understand you ought to want to be in relationship with the Lord because when you're in real authentic relationship with the Lord, anything is possible. He has limitless uh, resources, which means uh, that he then knows how to speak to you uh, and lead you and guide you. Uh, but also he does it because he now knows that you're willing to be his own. He now knows that you're willing to subject yourself to his authority. Uh, and so when we are saved, uh, indeed, the Lord vouches for us. When we are uh, saved, the Lord then becomes our insurance policy. When we are saved, the Lord is interceding on our behalf unto the Lord, doing things that we didn't ever know were possible, bringing us out of things that we didn't think were possible. When we indeed are saved, we become real resurrection people, which means even when they do what they do, even when we are crucified, even when we meet our demise, in so many different ways, God will resurrect us and make us better than we were before. And I believe you want that. And so today, if you are not saved, if you don't know what salvation is, if you don't have real authentic relationship with the Lord, I'm praying for you that you indeed would get it today and that you would say, it's me, I want it. Second of all, uh, we invite you to be part of the St. Stephen's family, this St. Stephen's movement in which we are trying to get people to live a DOA lifestyle, one in which they discern the voice of the Lord and that they're obedient, that they might see what God has for them. And my name is Christopher Paul Burnett. And I would love to be your pastor and not to count you as a member and not to put you on a roll, but to help you to experience what God has for you. So I want to walk with you and I want to talk with you and I want to help you and lead you to places you didn't even know God wants to take you. And so today, if you don't have a church home, we want to wrap our loving arms around you and walk with you and help you through things that you didn't even think you can make it through. And so if you don't have a church home, St. Stephen's would love to have you uh, be part of their family. And so come on, if you don't have it, uh, go ahead and put, I want to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm believing God is speaking uh, uh, even in uh, this moment uh, through these virtual airways to people that we know not of. Uh, and we ask you to go ahead and share this. We ask you to go ahead and put your comments in here. Tell me what it is that you uh, like about the ABCs. Tell me what it is uh, that's working for you now as you live a DOA lifestyle and as 
Reverend James prayed, I'm praying that you would begin to pray that God would manifest this DOA lifestyle in your life to show you what it is that he's really trying to do. But it starts with you discerning his word and being obedient. And so as we stop now, we want you to discern what is God telling you to give? What is God telling you to give today? And, and I need you to be obedient unto that. It's amazing to me that we'll go to restaurants uh, and uh, they'll send us a receipt and they'll put on there a suggested tip and you'll go ahead and give it. So you'll go ahead and give it. And guess what? It's always more than 10 percent. Uh, and, and some of us even leave feeling guilty uh, if we don't uh, pay that. Uh, but here it is. The Lord only asked us to start our giving at 10 percent. Uh, the way to uh, ask for 18 percent uh, this weekend, I was 20 percent. Uh, and when I began to look at that, uh, if I go in with more than five people and they're going to automatically take that 20 percent uh, off the top uh, and i need you to understand here uh that god has done more than just bring your food out to you uh, god has done more uh, than just put your order in uh, god has done more than just bring you some water to your table god has done more than bring you a napkin to wipe your mouth uh, in a 30-minute dining experience. God has been with you all your life. God has been with you making a way out of no way. God has been with you doing things that you couldn't even imagine. And then we got the nerve to complain, to make it like I'm a bad guy for suggesting that you ought to be giving unto the Lord who is more than a waiter or waitress. He's the cook. He's the owner. He's the waiter. He's the waitress. He's the maid. He's the staff. He's the cleanup person. He does all of it. And so the question has to be, what shall I render unto the Lord for all he's done to me? done for me, brought to me, helped me with. And I pray that you indeed would be mindful that indeed God is worthy to be praised and that you would be faithful in your giving. You see it before you now. You can give by mailing your checks to 1601 Old Eastern Avenue. You can bring it in person at 1215 and drop it off in one of the tithing boxes. You can always give at any point in time, whenever the money hits your bank account, whenever somebody gives you money at ssame.org, and you can give online, or you can text to give, and that number is 844-334-1180. And as you give today, I pray that you understand. It starts with a tithe. That's 10%. Anything else is... Deserving God, God deserves so much more. We make a big deal out of tithing as though that's something ultimate. That is the bare minimum. Uh, let you go into a restaurant, a high-end restaurant, and give 10%. They're going to roll their eyes, suck their teeth uh, as you walk out the door. Come on, y'all. Let's do right by God today. Let's give unto the Lord. May the Lord bless you real good. Uh, we look forward to seeing you this week on the day to pursue. Um, that's what we do to make sure uh, that you can really live these ABCs of a DOA lifestyle. Uh, we start out every morning at 7 a.m. We stop at 12 noon and we conclude every day with 8 p.m. prayer. And so we look for you uh, to join us on the day to pursue this week. Um, and we look for God to speak to you and open up windows and doors for you as you are obedient to what you get out of those moments and apply them to your lives. Come on now unto him who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all we know to ask or can imagine according to the power that works within us. To him be glory in the church. And all the people of God said, amen, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah.